Father, and through you, over us. Jesus, we need you. We need an answer. The living God. And so, Father, I just bring this word uh, this morning and I ask you to continue to speak to our hearts, Lord. So we just ask that your word will transform mm. us in our inner man, Lord. Thank you that your word is a living word. A living word. Amen. So we, we're just continuing in um, this journey of grace. And in the beginning of this series, I've talked to you about being in the book of Romans and Hebrews and Galatians in this time. So if you have time, just, just read. Read through those familiar passages. And yes, we have the table here, and I just want to encourage you, as I'm speaking even today, that you just come and, and get, partake from the table. Okay, you can just come up, we are not going to do it in a formalized way, but as you just feel it, like the Lord's just telling you, go and partake. The table is set before us, continually. Huh. We have access to the body of Christ. And so I want to just encourage you, just as, as I'm preaching, that, that you will just be open to let the Lord just speak, the Holy Spirit just speak. Thank you, Lord. So, um, I'm going to touch today on a portion of the book of Galatians. And I have a slideshow that I put together very quickly this morning. And I decided, like, I need some visuals. It always helps. But... It does. Galatians, the book of Galatians is said to be too emotional, too personal, too intellectual, too spiritual, and too controversial. It's, it's quite a book to read, right? And if you've worked through the book of Galatians, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's not an easy book to read, but it is so central to our faith, to who we are, our very existence as Christ followers. And in the book of um, Galatians, we see that there is a, a confrontation, a disagreement, a, a argument that is, is, uh, takes place between Paul and Peter. And we don't like disagreement or argument or uh, we don't like it, right? It's, it's, it's uncomfortable when we disagree theologically or when we have different viewpoints. We, we've come through the season of that, right, where it's been a challenge to us. And, and we, we are uncomfortable with this kind of conflict or, or confrontation. So David Pawson says this. He's, David Pawson is one of my favorite theologian, writer, speakers. He says this. Arguments can be good. If Luther had not been willing to get into an argument, the Reformation would not have occurred. His argument has benefited us greatly. The reasons why it is not popular today is that we fear that differences will lead to division. Hmm. The two prime virtues considered today are tolerance and tact, though neither is a virtue in the Bible. I'm going to just say that again. The two prime virtues considered today are tolerance and tact, though neither is a virtue in the Bible. Jesus was neither tolerant nor tactful. Wow. That statement was written over 20 years ago. I wonder what David Pawson would say to us today. Yikes. Right? This is very challenging. So, as you read Galatians, and I encourage you, get, get into the Word. Get into the Word. As we are 
of, of walking through this journey of grace. Get into the Word. I am being so revived in my inner man. I, I actually, the whole of last night, I was dreaming Scripture. And I was like, woke up, and I was sitting here this morning thinking, what were those passages? I was, I was reading them, and I was reciting them in my dreams. And it's like, that's what happens, right? We get transformed by the living Word of God. As we, as we just sit and chew on even a tiny little verse, it's powerful, man. And we in this time, more than ever, need to be rich in the Word of God and truth. We are living in a, a time where, where truth is being tested to the utmost limits. So we find that Paul is frustrated as he writes to the Galatians. Hmm. There is a problem. There is an issue. Oh. And the issue is this, okay? That the gospel is challenged. The gospel, the, the pure gospel has been challenged. Hmm. And, and Paul comes and he challenges the gospel that is preached, that is faulty and under the law. His biggest problem was with Jewish believers who followed Paul around everywhere. They were like flies, just badgering him, these Jewish believers. They said to the Gentiles, don't listen to Paul. He's only giving you half the truth. He has brought you into faith, but he didn't bring you fully into the faith because you need the law of Moses as well as Christ. Huh. So here... Jesus comes in the flesh. God comes in the flesh. He saves people. And what do they do? What do they do? They try and go back into the law, right? And we've been we've been following the progression of the law. You know, the, the, the covenant that God made with humankind, starting with the Abrahamic covenant. Then we talked about the, the Mosaic law that was given. Last in the last couple of weeks, and we are now dealing with this the struggle into the new covenant, right? And it, it is, we see that even in these times, in Paul's times, the, the, the book of Acts, that they were struggling with this, <laughs> coming loose, getting loose from the, the law that they were under, and this is still our struggle today. Jesus became the curse so that we can be free. And this is what Paul is anxious about in this letter. He is anxious about the, the, the laws that the Jewish believers are putting back on the people, including the Gentiles. He's concerned in the beginning of, of the, the, the book of Galatians about the law of circumcision, right? And so for, for the Jewish people, circumcision, eating kosher, and the Passover was very important. And you broke any rules around that, you were in trouble. And so they are saying, no, 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 we, we still need to hang on to the past, to the, to the laws. He's concerned that they are again opening the door through Judea, through Judaism back into the law. And, and we need to take this kind of teaching, this kind of uh, teaching of Paul, very seriously in our times. It is not just contextualized to these Jewish believers, because we can, we too, live under, or can live under that same legalism. And I'm going to look more, more in depth at, at this. It is important for us to put people under grace. We are under the law of Jesus Christ, not the law of Moses. And the problem is that we can still live with this mixture in our lives. <laughs> I'm not measuring enough. I'm not performing well enough. I'm not doing this enough. I'm not doing that enough. And it's there. Nobody needs to know about it, right? It's a very private place in our thoughts where we are, are, are just 
We've got these things in our thinking that are faulty, that keep our heart, keeps our heart trapped. So, for Paul, the real issue was salvation itself, and how was salvation obtained? Jesus was a friend of sinners. He was a friend of sinners. He came for the sick. He came for the unwell. He did not come for the ones who had it all together or thought they had it all together. He did not come for those that, that, that had the face on, right? The self-righteous. He came for the sinners. He actually really struggled with the self-righteous around him. So we see here four different things. We see that salvation is obtained through works alone. People who believe that salvation is obtained through works alone. We see that, that some believe that, that salvation is obtained through works plus faith, right? Doing good Christianity. So we are saved by, by works plus faith. We are saved by faith plus works. We believe in Jesus and then we keep the law. But Paul was fighting for this. You are, are saved by faith alone. You are saved by faith alone. I'd like us to put up Galatians, the first slide there, Galatians 3, 2 to 4. Galatians 3, 2, 2 to 4, and you can follow this in your Bible. This is, I'm reading from the Amplified Version here, the classic edition. And, and I love Paul's candidness. He is not afraid to call things out. He's not afraid to challenge the thinking around him. And he's not speaking to non-believers. He's speaking to the believers here. He's speaking to us this morning. He says, let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as a result of obeying the law and doing its works? Or was it by hearing the message of the gospel and believing it? Was it from observing a law of rituals or from a message of faith? Are you so foolish and so senseless and so silly? Just wait now. So he says again, he says to them, Are you so foolish and so sen senseless and so silly? Having begun your new life spiritually with the Holy Spirit, are you now reaching perfection by dependence on the flesh? Have you suffered so many things and experienced so much, all for nothing, to no purpose? If it is really is to no purpose and in vain. And he's he's challenging them head on, right? He's calling them you foolish people. You foolish people. You, you get stuck in yourself. We get stuck in ourselves. Our our our, our dependence on our self on the self. I need to fix it. I need to make right. I need to reach God. I need to perform. I need to achieve this in, in, for the kingdom. We are missing something, right? Mm. We are missing something. And, and I, I feel that Jesus is really shouting at us in this time. <laughs> yeah. You've got to get these basic truths settled in yourself. Not because he's angry, but. Not because he's angry. No, but because he is so in love with us. Right. He so wants to reach us. And again and again we see that through through the through the word, through history. God reaching for his people, reaching towards them, shaking them at times. Sending this man Paul to shake them up. Right. And 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 to shake us up. I thought of I thought of it like this, you know, it's like Jesus is telling us, stop falling backwards, right? If you're going to fall, when we fall, and we will fall,
people fall forward, fall forward into grace. Yeah. Right? And we are ones that are falling forward, not back into the to, to the legalism, back into the performance, back into believing the lies of the accuser. But fall forward into grace. Fall forward into him. Because when we do that, we have the strength to stand up mm. and carry on. We cannot fulfill the law, ever. We will never. It's like driving, you know? You either are obeying the rules of the road, right? <laughs> or you are not obeying the rules of the road. There's not half obeying. I see lots of smiles. She's looking at me. The, the table's right there if we need to repent. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, but it's, it's true, right? Like we, we say, okay, do not steal, do not murder, do not commit adultery. Okay, and how many am I taking? How many of the ten can I get right? Oops, I coveted. I've messed up. We can never keep the rules fully. We know that, right? It's not, we try our best. We, 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 we do. We do. We don't, and I'll touch on this in a, in a minute, but we, we try our best. We want to live holy and righteous lives. And, and the Lord is calling us to that. But it's in Christ. It's in Christ that we live holy and righteous lives. And only in Him. It actually says this, Cursed be He who does not continue in all these laws to go on doing them. This is what we live under if we continue to live under the law, to try to get into heaven in our own strength. And Robert touched on this last week, uh, Deuteronomy 28. And actually, somebody was telling me this week they, they were reading through Deuteronomy 28. It's pretty scary what happens when you don't keep the law. Pretty scary. I was talking on that. So, why? Why was the law there? We talked about this last week. The law was there to restrain sin. And to reveal our sin and our need of grace. Right? That is what the Lord did. It highlighted our need for Him. I'm getting hot, sorry. <laughs> so let's go to the next slide then. Um, please. Is Trevor there? Yeah, I just need to move on to the next slide. So I want to show you this, this wonderful illustration that um, really spoke to me and I just thought, this is, I need to just show these visuals, right? I, I, I'm a visual person and so we see there, on the one side we have legalism and on the other side we have license, the word license. So here is legal, here's legalism. Here is license, okay? So legalism, license, but in the center is liberty, freedom. Okay, so legalism, and I love this picture here. So, so legalism is like a cage, right? When we are under the law, when we put ourselves under the law, we are stuck in that cage. We imprison ourselves again. The, and, and that's where shame and condemnation and guilt start to, to rule our thinking, right? In that place of legalism. Because we will never feel good enough. We will never feel like we can match up and live up to this, these conditions that we often put on ourselves. So there are two ways that we lose liberty. Legalism and license on the other side. And you can go to the next. So there's liberty in the middle. You can go to the next slide, Rob, but there's license. And there's a lovely picture of a swampy place. That's license. Okay? License is to do whatever I want to do. Right? I can be a Christian, but I can sleep around. I can be a Christian, I can get drunk. 
I can be a Christian and I can, you know, lie and gossip about people, right? So we live in that place of license, which is a swampy mess. Because we, we convince ourselves that I'm saved. I've got a ticket to heaven. I don't need to that be doing all the stuff that the Lord tells me to do. I can do what I want. And we see a lot of that happening, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in that gray place, that swampy place that sucks you in little by little. I've been there in that swampy place. It is a terrible place to be when you are Christ's follower. Yeah. It is a terrible place. Yeah. And we know those who have been there, right, as believers, allowing ourselves just to dabble a little bit here, you know? Yeah, you know, not really sinning completely. And it's, it's, it's a very scary place. So the cage and law are the don'ts, okay? Don't do this, don't do that. And what, what happens there is that our hearts get hardened, right? We become hypocritical, we become pharisaical. Yeah. Look down on people. <coughs> Point out the sin in their lives, right? Even in our own mind, we don't want to tell anybody. But we're just, oh yeah, they're like that. I can see that's happening. And actually this week I really felt, I wasn't going to share this, but now I think I will share this. I really felt the Lord highlighted something to me this week. And, and I, th I think that happens when we become like that older brother, looking down, you know, at others. And, and who, who's been there? Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's own it, right? We, 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 we fall between the legalism and the license, and then the legalism and the license, instead of walking in true liberty. But I, I felt that what happens here, in this place of legalism, and, and we, when we come under the law again, we become suspicious of one another. And I felt the Lord showed me that this week, and Robert and I have been praying, I shared it with our group on Wednesday night, where we allow a spirit of suspicion to come into our midst, and that is a pharisaical way of thinking. And I believe it's not just over Brandon. I believe it's something that is over this nation. The spirit of suspicion. And we've allowed that to creep into the church. I've allowed that to creep into my life. And I've had to repent of that this week. And I encourage you to take that, to test that word. Test that word that I'm sharing right now. Is that true? Do, have we opened ourselves to a spirit of suspicion? And we were trying to talk about this on Wednesday, talking about what is the opposite of suspicion? It's trust. Yeah. It's trust. And we, we, somebody said to me just a day ago, that I don't know if I really trust God. Like God is really testing me on this. I say I trust Him, but then I take control back, or I, I try to figure things out myself to manipulate things. And the Lord is saying, repent. Repent of, of that attitude in your heart. Don't let that come in and cause division in the body of Christ. Don't let that cause division between yourself and your brother and your sister. We are going to have eternity with one another. Eternity. This is our practice run, people. This is where we get to, to really be tested because we, we're only human, right? But he's saying, come and, 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 and work this out with me and work this out with one another. So what is liberty? True freedom in Christ. So you'll see if you read through the book of Galatians that he really goes into this, you know, in chapters 1 and 2. The liberty of the spirit, you can go back to this, oh there we go. Oh, you broke it. <laughs> the liberty of the spirit is not doing what you want. And it is not doing what others tell you to do. It is giving the Holy Spirit permission to guide you. I'm going to read that again. 
the liberty of the spirit is not doing what you want, and it is not doing what others are telling you to do. It is giving the Holy Spirit permission to guide you. Life in the spirit. This is amazing. Life in the spirit is the freedom not to sin. Isn't that profound? I don't make that up. That was David Corson. Life in the Spirit is the freedom not to sin. I just love that. And we've talked about this. We've talked about how, you know, the license is, is that opposite danger, right? It's the opposite danger, the, the swamp. It's the works of the flesh. It's, it's that other form of slavery. And Paul lists this, right? He lists this in Galatians. You know, some are obvious ones, promiscuity, the occult, and others are, are a little more subtle, like quarreling, rivalry, jealousy, envy, prejudice. Oh my word, are we not guilty? Are we not guilty of this? Quarreling, rivalry, jealousy, envy, prejudice. We need to be quick to pull ourselves from these places of legalism and of license. Quick. Recognize it quickly and confess it to one another. I spoke to a friend this, this week and she said, I have got freedom in my life because I confess something to others. And, and it came in the light and I'm free. I am free. And that, that is the truth, man. The word says, confess your sins one to another and you will be healed. healed. Confess your sins one to another and you will be healed. And I think the Lord is calling us back into these simple truths of the gospel. Right? Make right quickly with one another. Confess quickly. If God is telling you, this, I'm not happy here. You, you're, you're dabbling here. Quickly repent, turn from, and walk away from, and walk into freedom, into the place where you are not governed by sin. We have the freedom not to sin, when we are in liberty. So I want to go to this last scripture, Galatians 2, 19 to 20. There we go. For through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Let me say that again. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Christ became the curse for us. When people trust in Jesus, what is true of him becomes true of them. When we trust in Jesus, what is true of him becomes true in us. Isn't it amazing? It's so simple, and we make it so complicated. <coughs> we don't trust him. Liberty is the freedom not to sin. We are free in Christ. And we have been given the grace to say no. No to legalism. No to license and to walk in that liberty and that freedom through the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit in us, and our faith in Christ Jesus and our hope in the Father, right? Who gave His Son. And it's this, it's this narrow path that we are called to walk together. That we are called to, to hold account, uh, each other accountable to, right? 
Like, let's walk this road together. We, we cannot do it in our own strength. And we are not called to do it alone. We are called to do it with one another, in community with one another. I'm going to end with this scripture here, Titus 2, 11 and 12. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. Let's, let's pray together and um, go. If you need prayer, if you just want to come up, Robert, would you just come and, and uh, his brother's just going to play a couple more songs? And I think we've been doing business with God, right? Each one of us already. It's, it's, I mean, you cannot read the scriptures and not be convicted, right? <laughs> Thank God that we still can be convicted. Right? That we haven't been so long walking with God that we no longer, you know, sin. We, it's